In this lecture, we are going to discuss about ear scenarios and uh, my mode of communication will be English and uh, sometimes Urdu. So, there are total 15 uh, important scenarios that we will discuss in uh, our lecture and it will be of ear scenarios. Um, uh, the source of uh, this lecture is Dhingra ENT and, and the objectives of the lecture are to make it easy for the student to diagnose scenarios as diagnosis of scenario carry one mark and in theory but if you do it wrong you will lose the rest four as well again to it make it easy for the student to diagnose scenarios as diagnosis of scenarios also come in mcq's portion uh, because a diagnosis is also crucial in ospes as well you will get stations on which you will have uh, scenarios uh, so this lecture can be used for as a revision tool so let's start our lecture so scenario one there is severe pain and tenderness of pinna and uh, there is painful jaw movements and periauricular lymphadenopathy the lymph nodes are uh, around the ear are painful and tender so what can be this scenario yes it is localized acute otitis externa also called uh, furunculosis of ear or boil ear uh, remember that in this lecture we are not discussing about uh, the explanation of each topic we are just practicing diagnosis of scenarios and the key points that to remember while diagnosing the scenarios and so this is a picture of acute localized otitis externa Briefly, it is an infection of hair follicle, also known as furuncle. Uh, be, it, is, it begins as folliculitis, small abscess or furuncle. It, uh, the major causative agent is Staph aureus. And it involves uh, basically the outer one third, which is the hair line portion of the uh, external auditory canal. Now the second scenario, there is pain in the external auditory canal hot burning sensation and pain with movements of jaw and thick and prolent discharge what can be the scenario the scenario is of uh, diffuse otitis externa that is acute now there is crusting scanty discharge strong desire to itch and irritation now this is of diffuse otitis externa which is chronic being done if proper management has not been done of acute otitis externa it progresses to diffuse otitis externa chronic form most commonly it is associated with uh, trauma absence of cinnamon and uh, obstruction of the external auditory canal which uh, leads to bacterial overgrowth and bacterial overgrowth causes inflammation and inflammation causes neutrophils and bacteria neutrophils and bacteria combine to form pus pollen discharge which comes out of the ear now third scenario the third scenario has similar sign and symptoms like uh, otitis externa you will have pain like uh, this pain in the external auditory canal burning sensation pain with the movements of jaw thick and prolonged discharge there are granulations in external auditory canal especially at the junction of cartilage and bony part remember that ex uh, the external one third of the external auditory canal is uh, cartilaginous and inner two third is bony there is also excruciating pain and uh, you will have a patient which is diabetic and the, his diabetes his or her diabetes is poorly controlled or you will be simply given random blood sugar is raised or he is or she is immunocompromised so what can be the scenario so the scenario is of malignant otitis externa it is similar to 
diffuse otitis externa but in this case the bacteria that is most commonly involved is pseudomonas aeruginosa that causes the typical features of granulations and it is malignant because it spreads to the skull base and causes complication as well now the fourth scenario there is sensation of blocked ear impairment of hearing tinnitus giddiness brown material in the ear the patient is asymptomatic and uh, it he becomes symptomatic when swimming or when water goes into the ear so what can be the scenario so the scenarios of impacted wax or excessive wax the symptoms appear because uh, when you swim or when water goes into the ear the wax swells up and causes the above mentioned symptoms so these are some symptoms of excessive ear wax now the fifth scenario there is red and bulging tympanic membrane marked congested tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane is congested swells up and there are symptoms of viral infection like running nose and fever and there is also earache as well so what can be the scenario yes the scenario is of acute suppurative otitis media an example case of acute suppurative otitis media is a 7 year old boy came to the ENT clinic with complaint of earache since 3 days he also had a running nose and fever since 14 days of admission as you can see that in acute otitis media there is an infected fluid in the middle ear and uh, a session tube is blocked in acute otitis media you have to remember that first there is viral infection then there is a bacterial infection superimposed which causes suppuration that is why it is called acute suppurative otitis media the viral infection is usually from uh, the upper respiratory tract infection and it travels from the upper respiratory tract through the eustachian tube into the middle ear now the sixth scenario the tympanic membrane is dull and opaque there is loss of light reflex as you know the light reflex appears in the anterior inferior quadrant of the tympanic membrane that is lost not seen it can present as only the symptom of hearing loss for example if a child present you with only hearing loss and there is no other symptoms and sometimes it also presents with defective speech eustachian tube block due to adenoid hypertrophy upper respiratory tract infection and tumors the tumor can be of uh, in adults it can be nasopharyngeal carcinoma as as you know that nasopharyngeal carcinoma arises from the fossa of rosenmuller the fossa of rosenmuller is just above the eustachian tube opening so what can be the scenario as a scenario is of serous otitis media also known as glue ear so the pathophysiology of uh, serous otitis media is that effusion caused by the transudate formation as a result of rapid decrease in middle ear pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure the fluid in this case is watery and clear in this case there is serous fluid in the middle ear in case of acute otitis media which is a bacterial suppuration there are there is bacteria in the middle ear in this case there is water transudate and this decrease of middle ear air pressure is due to the blockage of eustachian tube blockage of eustachian tube can be due to adenoid hypertrophy upper respiratory tract infection that causing inflammation of the eustachian tube and blocking it tumors blocking the pharyngeal end of the eustachian tube all these condition lead to the decrease in air pressure within the middle ear now this is some picture of 
otitis media with effusion, serous otitis media or secretory otitis media, glue ear. There is no infection. This thing is, you must remember the difference between acute otitis media and serous otitis media. Fluid in the middle ear, accession tube dysfunction, blockage, most common cause of hearing loss in children also cause, can be associated with Down syndrome, cleft palate and in adults it can be due to post upper respiratory tract infection, uh, post uh, paranasal sinus tumor or some sort of nasopharyngeal cancer. Now let's come to scenario number 7. A chronic condition greater than 3 months. Prulent, there is prulent mucoprulent or profuse ear discharge, hearing loss and there is a central perforation. What can you think of? Yes, it is chronic superative otitis media and uh, from the above features, it is of tubo tympanic type, which is the safe ear. Because it is called safe ear because there are no associated complications, there is no cholecystoma which is causing the complications like bony erosions. Bony from bony erosions, there are intracranial and extracranial complications. This is a picture of chronic or superative otitis media, tubo tympanic type, safe ear, simple perforation, intermittent, non offensive, non bloody discharge. And you must also remember that there is no bloody discharge. There is a discharge, but there it is not bloody. It is there. It is a superative discharge, but and it is of profuse. It is a profuse discharge, but it is not bloody. On examination, there is a central perforation. 